بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Okay, so today we're going to make uh, the solution for uh, the exercise about uh, the matrix. So I'm going uh, to create a class matrix. Okay, <clears throat> and start with the first question. And the first question here is about matrix matrix multiplication. Okay. The matrix multiplication. Uh, I think you already know the, uh, the formula in algebra course before how to multiply the matrix. If we have the matrix C is equal B multiply A multiplied by B, so C I G is equal to B I K, uh, the sum of B I K multiplied by uh, or the sum of A I K multiplied by B K G. This is the formula that you will find in uh, in mathematics course. So we're going just to implement this formula here in this uh, Java program. So I'm going to create here matrix a uh, function uh, pub public abstract. And here, what does it return? It's going to be called multiply. Okay, mal multiply. It takes two parameters. So the first parameter is uh, matrix A as double, and the second parameter is a matrix B as double as well. And what is the return type? It's going to be a matrix as well, because the, the product of two matrices is a matrix. OK? So first of all, we need to make sure about whether we are able to multiply the two matrices together. What is the condition for being able to multiply two matrices? Yes. Uh, no, public static, sorry. Yeah, I want to say static here. No, good point, okay. What is the uh, purpose of, uh, what is the condition to satisfy in order to be able to multiply two matrices? Yes. You have A multiplied by B. A multiplied by B. So. What's the condition? No, the opposite. Number of columns of A equal to the number of rows of B. So this is the condition. So first of all, we have to make sure about this. So if A zero dot length, this is the number, the number of rows is different from b dot length. So in this case, there is an error. I'm going to raise an exception. OK, we know the exception from last time. It's new illegal argument exception. OK. And here I can just uh, put a message. Uh, the sizes of matrix of matrices do not match. So now I am sure I'm not going to process the multiplication only if this condition is met. Otherwise, it's going to raise an error. And now, what we should do? We need to make for loop. So first of all, I need to create the matrix that is going to be the result. So this matrix is going to be called product here. OK. Equal a new double. So what is the number of rows here? What is the number of rows for this matrix? The product. You have matrix 2 by 3, OK, multiplied by 3 by 4. What is the result? Uh, 2 by 4. OK, so it's the number of rows of A and number of columns of B. OK, so here A, 0, the length. No, it's the opposite. And here B dot length. Okay, yes, it's like this. Uh, this is no, yeah. It's number of rows of A and number of columns 
of the okay so now we get it are you following Why we don't put an S out? The yeah, under uh, throw new legal argument exception is going to stop the program. Stop the program. Yes, it will not continue. And if you make S out, it's not going to stop the program, and then you may have calculation errors. So we want to stop the program or to raise there is a problem, to raise the problem whenever this problem occur. We don't want to continue the execution. Voila. Okay, so here I'm going to make uh, the three for loops because you need to have three for loops here. Okay, from i equal to zero, i smaller than uh, a dot length. So this is the number of rows, i plus plus. And here we're going to have for int g equal to zero, g smaller than b zero dot length g plus plus and then so so far i'm going to do what i'm going to do product i g is equal to what an opponent is equal to a i k plus B, K, G. So why is this? It's, this is mathematics. Okay? Mathematics says us it must be, uh, it's, this is here the product of both. And of course, you have to do the sum of products. Sum of this multiplied by this. So in this case, I need to make here a for loop for the parameter K k equal to 0, k smaller than uh, a 0 dot length, this is the number of columns of a, and k plus plus, and here, this is the third loop. And of course, I need to initialize <coughs> this t0 in the beginning so that it can inc increment every time. So using these three, three loops at the end, we're going to find the product for all the values. And finally, we're going to return the product as a result for this function. Is that clear? OK. So all you need to do here is to do three, four loops to calculate the product of two matrices using the equations from the problem. Which one? This one? So what do you want to do if we don't do it this one? We are going to the product IG is equal to the sum product IG plus AI with a certain index K multiplied by BK B, K, G. So here there is an index K. Okay? Because you multiply this row by the other column. Okay? So for every I, G, I have K that goes through the number of elements of the A columns. Wada? Yes. Yes. So this is about the multiply. You can, if you don't know about the mathematical formula, you have to review it first, understand it, and then you're going to understand this program. Because this program is just an implementation of something in mathematics. Yes. We return the product here so that Yeah, we're going to make a static void. This is void to uh, void main. This is to execute the program. Now, this is just a function. 
we're going to use the function later on. Okay, so later on I'm going to use here public static void main. This is not needed, by the way, only if you want to execute your program. Okay, just I put it empty now. Later on I'm going to work on this. So now the, the second function is to do what? The right matrix. Second function here is about a right matrix here. So I'm going to do public static right matrix. Does it return anything? No. So right or I'm going to call it save matrix to file. And here it's going to take two parameters. I didn't specify two parameters in the homework, but uh, so I'm going to specify the matrix itself that I want to write. Okay. And also the file name, where in which file I want to write this matrix. So I'm going to call it file name. So when you want to write, the first thing you need to do is to create a file. Sahwala. Okay, I'm going to create a file. Okay, I need to create a file here, equal a new file. Okay, uh, so I'm going to, to, to point to the file name. Okay, this is the file, pointer to the file. Now I have to write a file writer. And this allow me to write into the file, okay equal a new file writer and I will put the file into this file writer and of course I need first to import the file writer and the second thing as you know before when you have a file writer you might have an exception so we're going to make it with the, using a try catch okay and here I'm going to do uh, input output exception error So now I am able to write into the file. But now the question, what I'm going to write? So I already told you here, your file should have the following structure. The first line should contain the number of rows and then the number of columns. This is the first line. So I have a certain format for my file. If my file is not in this format, I cannot understand it later on by reading the read method. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to have the matrix itself. So this is the line, the first line of the matrix. How many, how many lines we have? One, two, three, four, five. So five lines and seven columns. So I want to save my matrix like that. So what is the first line I'm going to save? is the number of rows and number of columns. Sahwala. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to do, uh, let me make string first line. So the first line should contain what? A dot length plus semicolon plus A zero dot length okay so this is I'm going to write and then I'm going to do fw dot write first line so this is the first thing I, I want to write I'm going to put I make a string this string is composed of the number of rows then semicolon then number of columns in this format, same format requested here. No split is going to come later. No, why you want split? But here another thing that you can use it much better than this for creating a string is what we call string dot format. String dot format. So instead of writing this, we can do string first line equal string dot format. 
Okay, and then what is the format of our string? I have person D for the number of rows and person D for the number of columns. And then I have to specify that the person D is for the, it's like print F, okay? It's very similar to print F, but doesn't print. This one is going to construct a string, is going to build a string, formulate a new string in, according to a certain format. So the format here is going to be one number, semicolon, and another number. So the first number is going to the number of rows, and the second number is going to be the number of columns. And of course, later on, I would like to go to the next line, so I'm going to add slash, slash n at the end. So this is going to make me the first line as equal number of rows, semicolon, number of columns, and then return to the next line. And then I'm going to do fw.write. First line is going to write it, yes. Now? Next. No, scanner is for reading. We are now writing. We don't have scanner now. We have file writer. Something for writing, something for reading. We're going to come to scanner later on. Okay? So now, since we are done with this line, we're going to go for these lines. So for this, we're going to make a for loop, and every time we're going to create a new line Okay, so here, uh, let me create, so I'm going to create a string line, which is empty, doesn't contain anything. And then I'm going to make a for loop uh, for int i equal to zero. i is smaller than a dot length and i plus plus. And then I'm going to make another for loop for g for the number of columns, g equal zero, g smaller than a zero dot length g plus plus. Of course, every time I have a new line, I have to make it empty. And then my line is equal line plus I'm going to add a i g plus here I have missed the int plus semicolon so you can see now this is the format I want so this is line line is going to take this value first plus semicolon and then it's going to add this value and then it's going to add this value until I come to the last g value when I come to the last visual g value I make slash n, go to the next line, and so on. Okay? So when I come here, we're going to make, I'm going to read the line into fw.write line plus slash n. So, so this is like we do system.add.println. So instead of printing into the screen, I'm going to write into a file. This is the same thing. It's like the display method that we did, but here we're going to write into a file the whole string. What's the problem with this? Semicolon expected. Okay. So now let's test, our, let's test our function. So look here, we don't have the file, any file. Now I'm going to create a matrix, double A equal to new double. Let's make a matrix. 10 by 40. Okay. Uh, I'm going to initialize the values of A. Uh, let me make a for loop. I'm going to make a for loop for initializing these values. I'm going just to uh, make uh, them random. 
It's possible to use the previous methods that we did before, uh, init as sums or init as products, or, but I'm going just to put them as uh, random values here. So A, how to make a random value? Math dot, math dot random. Okay. Uh, no problem, yes, we can multiply by anything, for example, by 10. Uh, I don't need a specific value, but just to have something here as a double. And finally, now I have the matrix A. I would like to save it into the file. So I'm going to call the matrix, save matrix to file, specify the matrix A, and then the file name, matrix A random, or let me call it random matrix A dot txt. So now we execute, and you go to our folder, now I find the file here, Okay, nothing is written for, uh, I, I did not close, yes, so something wrong I did here. When I made FW, I did not make FW.close at the end. Okay, and probably this is the main problem. Now I get, maybe the matrix now is very large, I'm going to put it some smaller values. Let's make it uh, 2 by 3, 2 by 4. Sorry? Yeah, it's not a problem of uh, numbers here. We're going to have something more readable now. Okay, so we have two lines. One, two, three, four. Okay. The problem is that these numbers are a little bit big. I'm going just to use uh, the, the method that we used before here, init sums. Okay, so at least we can have some kind of better display. I'm, I'm going to use, instead of this one, So in its sums, it must be double. OK. Uh, let's make it, for example, here uh, 6 by 8. And we try again. Now we get it. OK, it's easier to see here. OK, so you can see now, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 lines and 8 columns. Okay, so you can see now, I have a file that contains all the information about my matrix. So the first line, I know that it contains the number of rows and the number of columns. And then I will have all the values, line by line, stored in the file. So why I'm using the semicolon here? Do you have any idea? Uh, if I don't use the semicolon, what I can do? Huh? Any other character we want. But the character should not be a number. Yeah, and for example, if I don't put semicolon. Okay, let's see for example, if we don't put if we don't put the semicolon here, okay, we're going to have something like this. What are my numbers? Okay, maybe because I have the dot here, but it's not very clear. Okay, especially that I have some other numbers here, like 1. I don't know whether this is 1.01 or this is like 12.03. Uh, uh, so I need to have separators between the numbers. That's why I can use, uh, I did use uh, the, uh, the semicolon. I can use, for example, the character plus. It may, it may work also, okay? Any kind of character that will 
make the difference. I can use a space if I want. I can use a space. Okay, so here when I open it again, you can have they are separated by space. I can use a tab slash n, I can use a star, slash t is the tab, so it's going to be uh, three spaces, a tabulation before, between them, okay? This is the tab here. So different types of characters, but uh, I'm going just to put semicolon for our matrix. Is that clear? Okay. Now, the second half of this exercise is about now, I have written to the file. Now, I want to read from the file. Imagine that now I have created another matrix B. And I want B to take all the values that are in the file from matrix A. So now I have to read to make a method for reading. So I'm going to create a method public static is going to read. So at the end it's going to return some value. Okay. So I'm going to return the matrix here. Uh, read matrix from Five. So what do what I should specify here? The file name, the file name of the matrix. And now since I want to read, I need to use a scanner. Or I can use some other thing uh, for reading. Uh, so I just need to use something to read from. Okay. So scanner equal a new scanner. Okay. New file. Okay, file name. I put everything here inside. This is equivalent to making here, for example, file, file equal a new file. Okay, file name. You, you can do the following, and then take file name and put it here. Uh, to take file. You can do like this. This is what we did before. But also, we can put all of them into one line. Okay, equally new file. So this is the new file that we created inside. Okay, so and scanner here needs to be imported. And of course, we need to get try and catch for the scanner. Okay, and here we just output file not found. Okay, now I read from the file. How to read from the file? We're going to use next line. I want to read line by line now. What is my first line? So my first line contains the number of rows, number of columns. So now I can do string, first line. So I, I assume that the format of my file like this. If it doesn't contain this line for some reason, it's not going to work. Because I assume that I have a specific format. I'm going to follow the same specific format. Do you understand? Okay. So here, the first line, how can I get the first line? You know, you know how to do it. Scanner dot next line. If I call next line for the first time, it's going to return the first line and then jump to the next one. So what does this return? This is going to return something like, we're going to go step by step. So now I'm going to have first line equal to this string. What I want to do, I want to get the value of number of rows from this string and the value of number of columns from this string. So what I, what I see here, I'm seeing that these values is one string, but I need to separate it. I need to split it into different numbers. So for this in Java, there is a method that is called split. Okay? So split, I have first line dot split, 
And here I specify the special character. So my special character is a semicolon. So what's going to happen here? This first line is going to be split into an array. So an array, the, 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 the first value is 5, and the second value is 7. So now it becomes an array of string. It's like writing something like string. This is in Java. OK. Let's call it uh, uh, matrix dimensions. OK. So we're going, it's going to be something like this. So now I can extract the value of n rows. What is n rows now? Now we have an array. How to extract this value? What is this value? Matrix dimension, 0. What is the index of this? Huh? This is number of rows, 5. And they array, it's an array. Split, a string, ila array. Kul element will array contains one value that does not contain the special character. Al-an, special character has a bishi qasman la string. Element al awal fee five. Well, element thani fee seven. So matrix dimension, it's an array. The first element corresponds to what? Number of rows, صح ولا? The second element corresponds to what? Number of columns. So I can write, <coughs> I can write here, number of columns. معقول ولا مش معقول? Which is that? Naam. Mumtaz. Naam. Naam. Yes. <coughs> no. Split will have an array of string. Last year you did the character with ASCII code conversion and so on. This doesn't apply here. Then we have a string. Okay. Now, as your colleague said, our problem now, we, want, we would like to, to get an int, like and the values stored here are string. So I need to convert them. How to convert them? Something that you know from before, you might think about casting. But casting int doesn't work. We cannot cast, we cannot cast an, a, a, a string to an int. This is not possible. In Java, there are libraries that allows you to do so. I think you remember the class integer, array list, or class double, and you might correspond to primitive types. The class integer, it has a method that is called parse int. Parse int. It takes a string as parameter, and it's going to extract the numbers that are inside this string. It's a way like casting. It's a way like conversion, but that. The now we have numbers, we five. The five is taking, even if we have five A, D, chill up everything that is not number and return you the number. It's a very clever. Okay, so we're going to use matrix dimensions here, integer.parse in, okay, and you're going to do the same for one. Let's go to the other We will see it later, but let me just finish the example. Okay, I know maybe this is a new thing, it's not a problem, we're going to work with this so many times. So we're going to 
really understand it fully. But now just about what is the new thing? We have split it. We have split the string, and then we got some string values, but we want to read these string values as int values. So we're going to use parse.in. Now say hat of a double, who make double dot parse double, that is a string, it returns a double. Okay? So we're going to have another example now on this. So now we got what we want, number of rows, number of columns, and this allows me to create the matrix that I'm going to return. Well, and don't, re don't forget, we want to return a matrix. So with this, I can just write at least now, I can just create my matrix. If I don't have this value, I cannot create the matrix that I want to read. And that's why we have saved here the number of rows and number of columns. So that when we read them the first time, we are able to create our matrix easily. Imagine that you don't have this value in the beginning. You have to read how many rows and then you have, it's going to be so much complicated. And this is something that is even used. Now, for example, if you take an image, like JPEG image, for example. JPEG image for you, it's the number of pixels and the number of horizontal pixels, the number of vertical pixels, height, height and width. The height and width, they are saved in the beginning of the file. So when, for example, you open this image into an image with an image viewer, أول شيء يقرأه هو number of pixels to know how many pixels is going to read. Okay, it's, so it's it's like we are doing the same thing here. We have number of pixels, well, number of elements. So we read the number of elements, how many elements we are going to have, and then we are able to read much easier. So now we create our matrix. We're going to read the other column, uh, the other lines. How many lines we have? So we read into a file. We use while dot, ha while dot has next because we don't know the number of lines. So here, do we know the number of lines? Yes. So we can safely make a for loop starting from i equal to zero until the n rows because we know that we're going to write to read n number of lines in this file. Okay. So here i if for int i equal to zero, i is smaller than n rows and i plus plus. So now I'm going to read the first line. Yes. It's possible. It's possible. It's the it's same thing. The same thing. Okay. So what I'm going to do here? I'm going to read the line. Okay. So I'm going to make string line equal what? Scanner dot. Next line. الآن سكانر دوت لكس لاين ايش تعطيني الآن؟ I'm going to read this value, this line. احنا we're going to write read line by line ولا لا؟ So نفس الإشكال الآن. I have a string that contains numbers I would like to read. But these numbers are separated by. So what I should do now? I need to extract the values. How to extract the values? كيف سوينا في المرة الما في ال split line dot split what is the character okay so what does this do هذا الآن it's like having an array containing these values of course containing them as as a string, صح ولا لا؟ So now we would like to read these values. So how many values we have here? What is the length of this uh, vector? It's the uh, n columns, one of the shape. Okay, so I can do for g equal for in g equal to zero, g smaller than and columns and G plus plus yes A can I read now AIG come to say we AIG AIG is going to be equal values of G no of G I know we're going to do that way okay it's the value of G 
But value of G now is a string. And this one is a double. So how should you do it? I need to, to convert. So it, now, because you have a double, we have the same thing with double. It's double dot parse double. Okay. Values of G. What the hell? Values of G. And then it's done. At the end, when I finish everything, I'm just going to make return A. So now we complete our method. If you want to make sure that our method is correct, I'm going just to make now read from matrix. And I'm going to see whether I'm going to have the same matrix as there. Read from matrix from five. Matrix from five. And let us display the matrix. So I'm going just to bring the display matrix that we did before. So I don't need to, uh, to redo it again. OK, it's the same display matrix we did uh, last time. Just going just to replace here by double, because last time we did it with in. And now we're going to do it with double. And now, after doing this, I'm going to do display matrix B, just to make sure that B is going to be the same thing as A. OK, now if I execute, uh, I have some error somewhere. What is the error? It's the return must be here. OK, return A, it's because A now is uh, defined inside the try catch. I have to put A outside the try catch. Because look now, uh, if A inside the try, it's not going to be visible to the outside. So I have to declare A, OK, outside the try. I can just cha change the value here, if it's possible to change it, if the file is found. If the file is not found, I'm going just to return a null value, because nothing was changed. And it's pretty much simpler to see that. So now, doing like this, and this is the matrix B, is it equal to the matrix A? It is the same, it is the same thing. Now, if I change the matrix A, for example here, for seven, look now, I'm displaying B, and B is just read from the file. Okay, I'm going to write this, and now it's automatically changed. So now this completes the assignment about uh, matrices and files. Yes? Where here? It's possible, yeah, it's another way. It's another way. We can use dot next double, and in this case, we're going to get them double by double. Yes, it's possible. It's possible. But at least here, I have introduced integer dot parse int and double dot parse int so that you can use them in the future. So I'm going to post the video online today. So uh, you can uh, review it, because uh, probably there are several new concepts, OK? And with time, you see these concepts are very simple. But of course, anything new uh, seems to be like difficult for the first time. But it's pretty much easy. OK, thanks.